All right, welcome back guys. We have a balance patch. Finally, finally, we've been waiting forever. And this one looks like it's doing some good things. Uh, it doesn't do anything too crazy, um, but some things that are definitely needed. Uh, a couple little nerfs, which I don't know if everyone expected those. I kind of didn't expect nerfs, so that's kind of nice since they're nerfing things that are OP at the moment. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna be looking at it through the lens of uh, RTA mostly, uh, PVP uh, a little bit, and then um, PVE after that. So first things first, Gianna takes the nerf. Thank goodness. Anything is good to nerf Gianna because she's the best unit in the game for RTA. Just, I don't even think that's debatable. She does too many things. Um, <clears throat> she got a buff with artifacts, a crazy buff with the additional damage. Um, so they're reducing her remove all uh, beneficial effects skill. They're reducing the, or they're increasing the cooldown time by one. So she could have gotten a way worse nerf. It could have related to her bomb or her crit off her skill or something. This is, I'd say the bare minimum of nerfs that she needs. She cycles so fast anyway that when she crits, I mean, her cooldowns are really, really quick. So I think that's a very fine nerf for her. We're happy to see that. She's still got her it's guaranteed thing, <clears throat> which is kind of crazy. Um, so this is, this is fine. Gianna owners, I'm sorry, but you know, you had the best unit in the game. Had a win rate that was crazy. Was an easy first pick if you wanted to. Um, but it was applicable in all situations. So, that's a nerf. Done. Alright, next nerf. Molly. Thank goodness. Molly, a LD Nat 4, was first pick material after her last buff. Which is a huge buff. If you can go from irrelevant to first pick, you've been over buffed. Um, and they, again, kind of gently nerfed her. They're not just nuking these units into the ground, a la Molong, when he just got nuked into the ground with his nerf. Um, they're giving her a fighting chance to keep doing her job. Uh, so that's kind of nice. They decrease the HP recovery from 25 to 20% and decrease the glancing from 20 to 15. Now, there's artifacts, so your recovery is still going to be fine. You get a 20% artifact, you're 24. Um, the glancing chance, 15 is still going to be a, a lot. It's still going to feel like a lot because it's still going to do its job. It's going to RNG screw up people that are trying to crit you. Um, so good job, Molly. You're still Molly. You're just not quite as insanely bad. One proc isn't basically a full full heal all the time. It's an 80% heal. So Molly's still viable, um, but it's a step in the right direction. All right, Vigor. Vigor, Vigor, Vigor. Didn't really expect them to hit Vigor since Vigor's sort of the uh, free-to-play option in a lot of these areas that... You know, people that don't have Giannas and Mollies, but it's a it's a deserved buff. Uh, the Shred is what got hit by one cooldown time. So I believe it was 100% uptime with uh, skill ups. You know, it was a three turn defense break on a three turn cooldown. Now it's on a four turn cooldown. So you have one turn where you don't have to deal with Vigor and his massive, massive defense break. I think that's more than fine. He still is a healer you can build for damage. He still has the uh, crit reduction, the speed, the heal, the defense break the uh, heal block. I mean, he's still got tons going for him. So, totally fine. I think that's good. Vigor was getting to the point of, like, one of the first three rune units you'd rune um, for RTA, and now that opens that area up for a couple more units. So, totally happy with that. All right, Chun-Li Light. They reduce the damage. It's not Super Lucian as much anymore. We'll see how it turns out, but, you know, just reduce the damage a little bit. That's fine. That's not something that really applies to RTA too much because those cleaves are not great. I mean, there's lots of ways to counter them. There's lots of ways to outspeed them. Um, just a general balance. She was maybe a little too much for uh, having no elemental disadvantage. All right, Light Art Master. Damage goes up. That's fine. That's not really an RTA thing. Maybe he wasn't killing as much as he should have, so now he kills more. Cool. Fine. All right, Water Art Master. Some interesting stuff here. Um... When enemies remove beneficial effects, all harmful effects granted on allies will be removed. So they remove their, they uh, cleanse themselves. You get cleansed is how I'm reading that. I might be off there, but I think I think that's that's how it works. Uh, the effects change when enemies enemies remove beneficial effects of allies when they strip you. The attack power of allies with removed beneficial effects will increase by 25 to 10. So that's it's a little bit of a nerf. When they strip you, it's not a full turn. It's just a boost. But then when they cleanse themselves, you cleanse yourself. And that doesn't appear to have any sort of a cooldown on it. So it's kind of neat. It's a cleanser for yourself that discourages them cleansing themselves. There's some situations where, you know, the enemy would debuff you up. 
cleanse up and then they're good. So maybe like Neftis, right? They debuff you like crazy. They keep themselves cleansed. Gives them some uh, some interesting options, right? Like what are they going to do? I, I feel like versus like a Rakuni, this would be pretty nice. The Rakuni's cleansing every turn. You're cleansing every turn. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a copycat skill. I kind of like it. We'll see if it becomes viable, but it's kind of neat. All right, they actually buffed the dragon's first skill. This is six years in the making. Um, all dragons got a little something on their first skill. Like, wow. Wow. It is 2021. They have the dragons. The dragons are buffed. Wow. Okay. Um, so, Varad, first skill, damage with attack and defense. Hey, look at you, Varad. You could actually do damage with your first skill. Happy days. Um, so, that's great. That's fantastic. That's common sense. Um, Zeratu is not a dragon. I'm thinking of the fire one, Zyros. That's the one. Uh, damage increases by 10% for each harmful effect granted on the enemy. Cool. He does dots. He does more damage. That sounds right. Um, wind, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, wind, first skill, now scales with speed, which is really, really nice. The wind one already did almost enough to be viable with the speed lead, uh, the cleanse, the skill reset. Now he's got speed scaling on his skill one. Um... I don't know. That might make him a skill one spam bot because I don't know if I want to use skill two if I'm not on despair or anything because speed scaling is awesome and usually build him pretty quick. So very nice buff for Jemire. All right, light uh, damage with max HP. That makes sense. He's a max HP dude and dark damage increases by 20% when it's a crit. So I'm assuming it's going to be crit all the time. So that's just a 20% damage buff. Not 8%, 20%. Uh, we'll take it. All right, and then Dragon Light Armageddon increased. Okay, that's fine. Whatevs. All right, some interesting stuff here. The Pontos, I believe, two turn invincibility and immunity from one turn. Cool. Turn two turns way better. That might make him actually somewhat usable. Um, and then increases the immunity effect up to three turns proportionate to the number of harmful effects removed from the allies. Okay, so it can go. It goes from two turn to three turn. If an ally's harmful effects are removed, the duration of immunity will increase by one turn. So, any harmful effects removed, immunity goes up by one. So, it's from two turns to three turns if you remove anything. Pretty good. Three turn immunity with a cleanse? I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, they had to make him better in Lulu, right? So, I guess they did. All right. Fairy Kings get a little love, which, of the things buffed so far, these, I think, are ones that maybe didn't need it so much. So, kind of a nice little bonus for you Fairy King owners. Water... Excuse me. Um, Overwhelm now comes with a one turn speed down with a 70% chance. Cool. Fire, one turn heal block, which is pretty nice in the passive kind of molly era. Um, we'll take it. It's a little bitty buff, but it's great for both of those. You know, we'll take anything that looks like that. And then dark, I think, is the winner here. A little bit of a bigger Nyx buff. Um, removes the beneficial effect with an AoE. So good job, Nyx. That's actually really nice for you. Um, notice how they call it Overwhelm of Fire, Overwhelm of Dark. So they're trying to buff things differently versus buffing everything the same. I mean, kind of long overdue, right? They always, you know, buff one unit, hit two or three. This is kind of nice. They can individually tune the units the way they want them. So nice little buffs there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Bisons and Slayers. These, the way these are written in the patch, I'm not a giant fan of because the skills are different and the names of the units are different. And so they have to list both forever. Um which is kind of kind of messy. I don't really care for it. So hopefully maybe in the future they'll just say Bison slash Slayer, Psycho Inferno slash Raise Explosion, you know, be a little cleaner, but, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a minor point. All right, so all Bison slash Slayers, Psycho Inferno slash Rage Explosion. Uh, damage goes from attack to damage uh, for max HP and attack. Makes sense because they're HP based uh, in general, right? Cool. That's a no-brainer. They'll do more damage. All right. Water Bison, the destroy goes up. That's literally it. Okay, fine. Destroy goes up. Cool. That's a buff. That's what we call a buff. Uh, let's go to Psycho Crusher. Uh, this is actually really nice. Let me pull up my Bison here on my screen. I believe that is the uh, skill two. I'll have to double check. But attack power for one turn, whatever. Defense break for one turn, yes. Much, much better. Still not amazing. Um... But defense break is so much better. So, so, so much better. Um, so happy with that. That's a nice little buff there. Um, M. Bison Wind. This is the Sager, I believe, which I actually have. 
So this was kind of exciting to see. Um, head press slash great sword of the end. I'm trying to keep keep these sorted out. So this great sword of the end is the one that's a single target full strip and AOE uh, attack bar reset to zero on a four turn cooldown. Now gets a single target uh, skill reset after the strip. So it's an it's another one of those double checks unless you know they've made it 100%, which sometimes sometimes they do that and it's not clear in the skill description but now it's a full strip full reset and an aoe bar reset which i think is really quite good um as far as buffs go i mean we're seeing segment used obviously we're seeing um well no we're not seeing the wind the wind mermaid used, so maybe that's a little bit different because the wind mermaid is a full strip well it, it, it checks it over and over. So it's a strip, a reset, a defense break. This is a strip, a reset, and an AOE bar reset. Cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm probably going to play with him a little bit um, since he picked up the defense break on two, the strip reset on three. He's wind, which is kind of interesting. Um, so we'll see. His main problems is he's an HP monster and his speed is not great. But hey, that's a nice, that's a nice little... Uh, it's a nice little buff that will be applicable in... It's kind of like what Ganny used to have in a way. Oh man, it's actually really... It's kind of like what Ganny used to have all in one skill. Ooh, that might be really good. Yeah, because Ganny's skill 3 is literally a reset and an AoE. Uh, but it's irresistible. So that's the difference. And Ganny used to have a strip on 1. This is a strip, a reset. Okay, so... I think it'll I think it'll see some action in RTA. It's just kind of tricky because we're so turn one focused now. Um, but yeah, if you're one of those people that brings all the single target strippers, a single target stripper with a reset and a bar reduce, cool. Make him your third one that goes. You know, so you remove a couple things, you strip with this guy, you reset, and then you do whatever AOE shenanigans you want to do. So I think that's the most relevant RTA buff so far for these guys. Yeah, because he's getting a defense break too. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, Ryu's. Hey, you got more damage. Good job for you, Ryu's. More damage. Cool. I don't think we need to talk about that too much because it's more damage. All right, triple combo. This is kind of interesting. The cooldown time won't occur if the attack stops in the middle. So what stops things in the middle? I'm assuming Triana, but that's not really the middle. That's after. Maybe Death, right? That seems like something that would stop them in, in the middle. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. I can't think of anything else, so maybe I'm just off there, but... Not not bad, right? Something a little bit a little bit of a boost. I'm not sure how much of a boost it'll be, but it's a little bit of a boost. Alright, hey Teor, you got a buff. Your AoE attack redu reduction is now 50% when you do your skill 3. Cool. So just to look at it, the striker is on a 4 turn cooldown. Te Teor is on a 4 turn cooldown. So a little something something for Teor. He got a little love. Alright, let's go to the point where I am super confused. This is Vanessa. I am confused, so let's look at it. Skill change, Warrior's Return. All right, this is a revive. As is, revise another ally with 30% HP when inflicted with fatal damage that can lead to death and increase the target's attack power for one turn. Got it. Automatic effect. Okay. 2B. Revives the dead ally with 30% HP and increases the revive's attack power for one turn. In addition, if Warrior's Return is available to be used, the skill will be activated instantly when another ally takes damage that causes death. Okay, what? What are we talking about here? So, currently, if something dies when the skill is up, it revives. To be, if the skill is available to be used, the skill activates instantly when another ally takes damage that causes death. So does that mean it prevents the death and revive something else what are we talking about here if it's available to use the skill will be activated instantly when another ally takes damage that causes death does it not go on cooldown like i am a little bit confused by the wording of this like sometimes i'm confused by the wording this one i am i'm pretty confused by the wording so what's different the the previous one it only activates if it's available to be used right in the future one it activates if it's available to be used. The revive is the same. The attack bar is the same. It says the dead ally. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I got it. I think I got it. 
There it is. Another ally, the dead ally. So she'll self-revive. Is that how we're reading that? I think that might be the only change. Right? Is it possible also that Vanessa can revive from the dead if it's up when she's dead? Maybe. I don't know. I think that's that's the the key another versus the another ally versus the dead ally so i think i think i think i think this is a self revive buff on vanessa that's kind of the only thing that makes sense so i'm going to go ahead and say it's that if i'm way off i am sorry but that confused me like crazy but i think that's what it is which is a nice little buff um makes the nuke down vanessa strategy not quite as viable let's introduce a couple new builds for vanessa you know you can build her a little more damage cuz you know if she dies she comes back um I like that. If I'm right, and that is what it is, that's really nice. So we're gonna we're gonna assume that's it and be happy. All right, let's move on to Ariel. Poor Ariel. Poor poor Ariel. Got a little buff. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> they buffed the HP, so it's now 50% heal, same as Praha, and now it's got a full cleanse, which is great. So that's the water, um, Lulu and friends, right? Water howl. So full cleanse, bigger heal. And you're still going to get some of those little healing dots, but not as much. Because it used to be a three-turn healing dot. Um, now it is grants HP recovery effect for three turns by the number of harmful effects removed. So actually, maybe it's a buff. Because <clears throat> if you're removing two harmful effects, do you get two three-turn healing dots? That's how it reads to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it reads to me. So if it's a three-turn cleanse, or it's a three-evil-thing cleanse, it's a three... three? Three heal dots? That seems really good in certain situations, right? Um, wow. So anti-Rika, anti-Bellinus, um, not anti-Neftis particularly, because she can uh, set you on cooldown, but if you proc, it's anti-Neftis. Um, that is quite a bit better. Because <clears throat> instead of one dot, you can get two dots, three dots. You get more of a heal. You get a cleanse. So nice little buff um, for Ariel. We'll see if it becomes viable. But at least, at the very least, it makes you think, should I bring this? Or Lulu and Friends, right? Lulu and Friends gives immunity, which is huge. But this has a different spot, and she's easy to ruin. She, he, he, excuse me, he. Um, easy to ruin. So maybe we'll see it. Definitely, it'll it'll make more sense in a lot of PvE applications where... You have control over what the opponent's doing. Um, so yeah, we'll take it. We'll see how that works out, but that looks pretty good to me. All right. Um, Elad gets another buff. Uh, soul protection for two turns on yourself. So you revive everybody. You soul protect yourself. Cool. Will it matter in um, RTA? Probably not, but really good in PvE. I mean, he was already good in PvE, and now he's even better. I mean, Elad is sort of the PvE auto monster for a lot of areas. Um, and he just gets better at that. You can auto Tart help uh, boss. You know, you can auto a ton of stuff in lab. Like, really, really nice. Happy with that. All right. <clears throat> Chun-Li Water decreases attack bar. Okay. More decreased attack bar, which will lead to more ignored defense. Will it matter? I don't know. Does Do they do enough damage? I don't know. Um, so that's where it'll all come into play. Oh, look. Damage goes up by 13%. Is 13% enough to make it matter? Who knows? Um, probably not in RTA, so we'll not worry about it too much. Um, same kind of deal for Wind and Dark. Doll seams. Oh gosh, these doll seams. I look at it and the, it's just a paragraph, and I'm unhappy that it's a giant paragraph. But let's see what we got. This is Water Doll Seam. Um, recovers your HP by 20%. If you get a turn without getting attacked for one turn, two. If you get a turn without getting attacked, you will get another turn instantly after attacking on your next turn. So if you don't get a turn, it bunches two turns together. That's pretty good. Um, I don't know if it's enough to make them usable, but that's not bad. All right, Dalsim Wind, damage increases by 50% with an enemy with inability. Cool, we'll take it. Uh, Dalsims all get their removed beneficial effects uh, increased to 75%. Nice. Here's the one that you know a unit needs a buff where you don't even remember what the unit is. So I saw Epicon Priest Fire and I was like, what is that? What unit is that? And I was looking at like Mystic Witches and stuff and I was confused. I couldn't find it in the three stars. And then I remembered, oh yeah, that's Chloe. <laughs> the unit that has been irrelevant for... An insanely long time. Got a buff. Wow, Chloe. Way to get a little respect. Um, 
So immunity three turn. Three turn immunity on a four star. That is really quite good. Um, three turn immunity is just... It's, it's great. It's really excellent. Um, and getting it on a four star is really, really nice. Uh, so I think that's going to be really good in uh, PvE. She's a healer. She grants immunity. She grants invincibility. Um, it'll be a little harder to deal with, you know, if you are used to waiting it out. If you ever see a Chloe ever, um, now you got to wait, you know, 50% more. So really nice buff there. Might see a few more Chloe's out in the wild. If you don't have a Vela, you don't have a Wusa, right? Chloe. Hey, why not Chloe? Chloe versus Wusa. I mean, there's something to be said there, right? One's fire, one's water. They kind of do the same thing. Chloe heals a little more, I would say. Um, so there's some there's some interesting decisions to be made there. I mean, Wusa still wins on base speed like you wouldn't believe, but that's that's a really nice buff. I like that a lot. Okay, Wind Brownie. This is a sneaky good buff. Like, sneaky good. This is a little bit of a cleave buff that I don't know that we saw coming. So I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know if I'll use it, but... It becomes viable in uh, Arena, like instantly viable in Arena, I would say. So, you remove all beneficial effects, you instantly get a turn. What do you do with that turn? I'll tell you what you do with that turn. You defense break them with that turn, with his uh, second skill, right? No, wait, I think I'm way wrong. I think you buff. I think that's the other ones, which is still great. Let's go ahead and check him out. Make sure I get this right. Because I am I so want it to be the defense-breaking one, but I think I might be incorrect. Um, where are you, little brownie? There you are. Oh, sad, but still really good. So, you strip him, right? And then you buff attack power and crit rate. Same kind of thing, right? Same kind of thing. So, this is a strip that comes with attack power and crit rate buff built in. So, that's pretty nice. It opens up... A different amount of units into arena right um, it sets you up for defense breaks it's kind of like galleon in that galleon does attack buff and defense break this does strip attack buff crit buff so kind of cool opens up some units that maybe reset attack bars reset skills um, and it's all in one it's a little bit more efficient for your uh, arena offense, right? That's all it is. Maybe maybe uh, guild stuff, but mostly arena. So cool, we'll take it. Anything that combines efficiency into one unit, we're all about. So that's really, really nice. All right, Ninetale Fox. Excuse me, Ninetale Fox. Um, you get a shield by the excessive HP recovery for two turns and turns into steals a beneficial target, a beneficial effect granted on the target. We'll take that. We're all about stealing beneficial effects. That's really nice. Yep. Ninetale Fox Light. Gain a turn after using this skill. Kind of nice. It's just always reincarnate every time it's up. She's a slow ticking, amazing unit. If she lives forever, she's going to get crazy good. So I have one of those. Apparently it's still in storage. But let's take a look real quick. Ninetailed Fox. There you are. So reincarnate is on a 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 turn cooldown. And it is a full cleanse and a full heal for you only. You get 50% increased attack power and defense every time. So attack power and defense is going to go up, 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 up. Um, the other skill she does, one of them recovers HP. And instead of converting to a shield, it now steals, right? So it's a skill 2 that steals stuff from one target. And then the skill 1 is a self-heal. So her attack is going to go up, her defense is going to go up. She's going to steal stuff. Um, and she's going to get crazy OP if you let her stick around for a long time. I mean, it happens five times. So she can get 250% more attack power, 250% more defense. So you probably build her with HP and let the attack power and the defense build up. I don't know that you would build her with attack power to start. You probably build her bruiser if you can, um, even though she's attack type. So kind of cool, kind of cool. All right, Elven Rangers. I mean, I don't know that this stuff matters at all. Um, but it is here. Decreases attack bar increases. It decreases attack bar to zero. Of enemies that are stunned. Okay. Maybe the continuous damage will have some bearing in the continuous damage uh, PvE teams. Maybe. I don't know. But not super interesting, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. The Dark Elven Ranger maybe gets a little bit better for those those dot teams. No, it's damage increased by 54%. 55? Too much. 53? Not enough. 54? Perfect buff 54 uh and now continuous damage over and over and over so maybe it's enough that's kind of cool and then the bear man do we care about that not really attack power whatever that's fine 
All right. Leader skills, these are actually relevant. Um, Kamun's leader skill decreases in guild content, which is probably good because it's one of the few viable leader skills in guild content for speed. Um, so it goes down by five, but now it's everywhere, which I think is kind of nice, I, especially in things like lab, maybe in TOA hell, if you ever think he's useful there. I don't know that he is, but just gives you another universal leader skill for a monster that everyone will have built. So I think that's pretty nice. Um, P RTA, probably not, but maybe in a pinch in like four-star league or something. Um, but yeah, it's not a nerf, but it's a buff, I would say. Um, a little bit of a nerf in guild content, which is kind of where he's used, but happy with that. And then the light monster, Amarna, whatever. Same kind of deal with defense. All right, that's fine. Whatever. Maybe it helps defense cleaves a little bit. I don't know. And then errors. There's always errors. We're not going to go through the errors, but they're all fixed. Okay. That was a lot. A lot of changes. I don't know that a lot of it will affect RTA in particular, um, but it's just a lot of tweaks of monsters that needed it. Nothing groundbreaking. Some monsters obviously left out that really kind of should have been included. I mean, come on. Christina is should not be an at five. If they just made Christina an at four, okay, she's a garbage nat four that everyone ever, no one will ever look at. That's fine. But they made her an at five. Why? There should be a reason. That's a cat bringing me a mouse. There should be a reason she's an at five, and there's not yet, so let's get her fixed, but we'll take what we can get here. Happy to see some of those nerfs that were long overdue, and by long I mean as long as they've been dominant. Gianna for forever, and Molly for since they overbuffed her last time. So, Okay, that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments or you want to chip in on what you thought, please do. Uh, are you happy about it? Are you sad about it? If you're enjoying the stuff I'm putting on the YouTubes, please like and subscribe and all that goody, 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 good stuff. And I will catch y'all in the next video. Take care, everybody.